And they do well, and they don't go toward marriage because of the, of the societal constraints that they believe they impose. Right. Well, I think people should go for what makes them happy, right. period. And then they can, they can work things and, out And everybody's better. in a different situation. I'm, yeah. a, I'm the anti-Rick because I've been married for 12 years. Me and my wife are knocking on wood. Where's some wood at? Right here, Doug. Right here you are, go. Are happily married. <laughs> we got two kids, and everything's fantastic. But, I mean, it was just a situation where it was right for us. But I have other friends right. that tried to get married early, and it was over in a year, right. over in mm -hmm. two years. Right. I got a lot of friends that are in their 30s and are happily, mar happily single and not trying to, uh, you know, experience marriage. Well, like thank Rick, you. Rick. Well, again, just like you said, just like college is not meant for everybody, marriage is not meant for everyone. But even though I'm single, even though I'm alone, I'm not lonely because I'm at peace with who Rick is. Understand, before you can be happy with somebody else, you got to be happy with yourself. Mm -hmm. And when a man and woman come together, it's like merging a large company together. Rick got his Jews, his Cialis, and his 20-year-old <laughs> women. You a happy dude, huh, Rick? Yeah. Oh, I'm a happy camper, man. No question about it. I'm, I'm at peace like with who I am. like Joyner's comedian said, you ain't having a midlife crisis, you're having a midlife Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> let me guess, let me guess. You drive a little Boxster, right? No, I, in fact, I have two cars. I have a brand new Range Rover and an S550 okay. that I ride and drive at will. So I can do what I want to do when I'm ready to do it, and I ain't got to hear no woman in the background telling me I can't do this. Chris, you talked about a couple of key words. Women start talking everything in praises of getting married. Mm -hmm. What are some signs or what are some other things that you look out for well, when, 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 you before you got married that you, that you look for in a woman? Well, when you go to McDonald's and she's looking in the bag, you know, in the, looking for a ring in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a fry, he's a Big Mac. You know, it doesn't come with no ring. <laughs> so it's clear, as evidence. Sometimes they, they hint around or, you know, sometimes it's their family that's impo imposing that on them. Like, yeah, you know, indeed. like, when are you guys going to do it? And I'd be like, dude. Jeff, uh, you being a man of the cloth, I like to, for things to be done subtly. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Indeed. Let, get, get to know me. Let's have three, four, five days. Let's know each other for four or five months before you start making it blatantly obvious that you want to go straight to the altar with it, me. I mean, and that's a, that's a beautiful ideal. I think we'd all like that. But in life, you get what you inspect and not what you expect. But now when we look at society, it says it pushes you to get married. So you run into to young ladies. They're 28, 29 years old, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to get married. My biological clock is ticking. I need these kids. That's kind of scary. For me, I don't understand that because my mom was 37 when right. she had my brother, 39 when she had me, 44 when she had my sister. My dad was 44, 46, and 50. So I always say there's time for that. You right. don't have to rush. And that's one of the things that can scare a guy off. For single men, though, is that a turnoff? You talked about that biological clock, and a lot of times... Brothers won't call a woman back because they feel like they're pressured right at the beginning. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. They're I just not that. ready for that After commitment. a few questions, you they're know, not the ready. First, yeah, because the brother they might is not be ready, ready for that you commitment. You're the last brother to talk about commitment on this panel right now, Rick. <laughs> the last, the last brother. That's fascinating. But you, you look at it, you have a date, you go out, and somebody says, uh, are you, you heterosexual? Do you do drugs? No. Have you ever been to jail? No. Clunk. <laughs> And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa right. hold on a second, you know, can we just get to know each other a little bit better before you start seeing the stop? You can see the look in the eyes sometimes. Yeah. About that biological clock ticking, I read the Bible every day, Rev, mm -hmm. every day, and I see women that was 120 that were still having kids in that Bible. Oh, so whenever they throw that, bit, that, that biological clock at me, I go, let's look through the Bible and talk about it. <laughs> let's turn oh, to look the story right of Sarah. She was 70 when she had five <laughs> right. kids. Oh, look right here. Right. 100 years old with kids. <laughs> you know what? We got time. What the rush? You can't throw the Bible out. I live in Atlanta, uh, and huh. they always say it's 16 to 1 in Atlanta. So I think it's real hard on ladies in this city specifically, man, because there's a lot of competition out there for that one dude. Right. It's 15 yeah, right. other chicks for that's that right. one dude. Man, so that biological clock really does. Do you have a vacant game. house next to yours? Because I'm moving to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> 16 to 1 means you got no, choices. Hey, no. It's primarily African-American women, though. So. Oh, yeah. So you might not want to move yeah, there. Yeah. Right. You got to move to China. <laughs> but there is a China. Wait, there is a Chinatown near downtown Atlanta. Right. You might be able to yeah. <laughs> Last call, man. Here, here Last comes, call. Here comes Last call. With the Jovetta with the refresh, too. There she go. That works out. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Hey, listen, man. We've been talking about why I never called her back and why black men never called her back. Got a question. We, we doing a service here, right? Sure. Okay. I got a question here that comes from Monica from Chai Town, Chicago. She wants to know, what can a woman do on a first date 
that makes you want a second, a third, or a more serious relationship. She can pay for my lunch and my dinner because, you know, black women don't pay. They always, she can take them out to dinner. I ain't never had Who's a sister. This guy? I ain't never had a sister say, you know what? I'll pay for that. But your Asian women have? Oh, they pay. Yeah, they pay. Sisters don't pay. They'll call you and invite you to dinner so you, and expect me to pay. So Rick says for the woman to pay on the first day. Uh, yeah, she can pay. Why, why is it always customary for men to pay? Why she can't pay? Look, I'm curious about the Rev. What would you say, uh, Jeff? I, I'm impressed when a woman offers to pay, yes, or at sir. least for her meal. So I would say offer to pay for your meal, have conversation that has to do with your life and who right. you are, ask questions about the man. And I don't mean questions like, do you want family, do you want kids? Ask about his life, his career, ask about things that he's interested in, and don't push it too hard. Jeff, just be good, yourself. Jeff, good point. Not, not as hard as my man Rick over there because <laughs> right. I just don't know about him. <laughs> but yeah, don't be a derelict. For the women out there, they have to uh, remember that a man for a second date, for a second or third date, mm -hmm. they want to see that you can carry on a conversation. Indeed. They want to see that you're just not a total, you know, ditzy, you know? Right. And they want to make sure that if I'm going to spend my time with this person, they have to be able to carry on some semblance of a conversation. Let's pull out your black and American have a Last, call, like, call, that's a last call, Chris, before you got married. Sense of humor deal. is important to me. Right. That's what allowed me to marry my wife because she's hysterical. Right. Mm -hmm. And conversation, you want to be able to go, you know what? I want to talk to this person again. I would like to have another conversation with this person again. That to me is important. Right. Just be cool, be laid back because if, we, if we're really going to get to that second, third, fourth date right. or a ring or some kind of marriage, it's got to be somebody that I can hang out with, chill out with, sit down with, and maybe not even talk on the porch. Right. You feel me? Right. And, and I'm still comfortable with I that. I like and, that. No talking, yeah. but pay the bill. And I'm still cool. I like <laughs> no, I mean, but, but Chris made a good point. Chris made a good point when I, when I met my wife. Uh, she was somebody that I could talk to. Talk and it was friends. Right. Talk like your friends. Like, you could really see yourself hanging out with them. My wife, you know, uh, she, she doesn't mind having a beer with me or whatever. We talk about sports. She's funny. She has a good sense of humor. Personality is real big at the very beginning. My sister-in-law, you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I never would have known. Yeah, Rick, <laughs> Rick wants I'm a, just joking, man. a 17-year-old Asian blow-up dog. <laughs> exactly. With a, with that a doesn't say American nothing. American Express card. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you, oh, give me a black card. Yeah, black card. Okay. Yeah, you know, we, we, we Not a black woman, but a black card. Yeah, black American <laughs> gotcha. card. That's the only thing I carry that's black. Well, let, let me ask. I got to ask my little brother a question, man. Have you learned anything from this conversation tonight? Yeah, man. What? I'm learning that I don't want to be a preacher. I'm learning that I don't want to get married like y'all. And I'm learning not to grow up and be like this man to my left. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm learning. Exactly. I need to keep on doing it the way I've been doing yeah, it. Yeah, that's positive right yeah. there because yeah. this guy right here, I don't know about this guy right here. Hey, man, you know, you, it, it's a good thing to be oneself. That's and, and I can appreciate what he said. That's what we all need to do is be who we are. No doubt. Not yeah. be what somebody else expects us to be. And, and especially in dating. And especially, that's another thing you can do as a woman and as a man, and that is build a foundation of friendship. Friendship, friendship. is the ability to be able to tell somebody anything without feeling like you're being judged. Right. And that's a deep thing, and a lot of people never reach that space where they build a relationship with each other based on that. Respect for oneself. Self-esteem, I think that's huge because dudes sense Most that. Definitely. Most definitely. We sense that from the very mm -hmm. beginning. Most definitely. And if you don't have it, your chances are very much dwindled. I agree. One yeah. of your chances yeah. are more, I agree. You're, you're more opt, apt to be that person that is going to be a one-night stand and you won't call back. Hey, man, uh, I'm almost there as far as these uh, drinks over here. Thank you guys for coming through tonight, Thank man. You. Just we, appreciate this we appreciate being here. We need more of this, man. Yes, we do. As black men, we need more of this. Gentlemen, we need more of this. Good sit down, man. I loved it. That was awesome. Yes, That's what's up. Sound check. Four, three, two. Singles. It's a marathon, all week long, starting Monday, September 22nd. Brought to you by Luster's Pink Oil Moisturizer. It's an everyday thing.